Now that we know the normal form games, let us start with uh, the first concept uh, in normal form games. Uh, and the concept that we are going to start with is uh, called domination. So uh, this is about domination of strategies. One strategy dominates other strategies. Uh, let us start with an example to understand what, uh, what I mean by uh, domination. So let's look at this uh, game matrix. Player one and two, uh, player one has two strategies, uh, U and D. And player 2 has uh, three strategies L, M and R and the, uh, the numbers represent what their payoffs are, uh, utilities are and uh, now uh, let us look at these numbers a little more carefully and let us try to um, argue whether a player, a rational player uh, who always tries to maximize its utility will ever play the strategy R. So suppose you are player 2 and you are uh, considering uh, playing a strategy uh, like R, uh, would you ever like to do that? And I will uh, try to argue uh, you will never uh, like to play R. Uh, the reason being that if you uh, play R in both these cases, if player 1 chooses U or uh, the other player chooses D, uh, you get a payoff of 2 and 3 respectively. But at the same actions, if you choose this action M, then you get 3, which is larger than 2, and uh, you get 5, which is larger than 3. So there is no perceivable situation where you could have played R uh, and you cannot improve that by playing M. Uh, so therefore, there is no reason why player 2 will ever play R. And in the context, in this context, we are going to say that uh, this strategy R is dominated by strategy M for player 2. So let us make this uh, definition a little more formal. So uh, first we are going to discuss about dominated strategy. So we are going to say strategy SI prime of a player uh, I is strictly dominated. So uh, uh, notice the term strictly. If there exists another strategy SI, uh, such that for every other strategy profile, every strategy profile or the other player. So in this case, uh, we did not say that uh, it's a it's a dominant uh, dominated strategy. So we did not say that L is uh, dominated by M, uh, because even though when player one plays U, uh, you might might get a strict benefit, but while the other player is playing six, you are not getting a strict benefit. So. Um, so therefore, you will, you will not be calling that M, uh, L is domi dominated by M. But M, uh, uh, R is uh, definitely dominated by M because for every other strategy profile of the other players, uh, this inequality holds. That is, if you play, if player I plays SI, uh, it is going to get strictly more utility than, uh, than that when it plays SI prime. So this is strict domination. There is a weaker notion called the weakly dominated strategy. So we are going to say that a strategy SI prime weakly dominated if there are two conditions. So for every strategy profile of the other players, you make this inequality a little weaker. So it will, it is not just it is going to be strictly better, it will be greater than or equal to. Uh, and this uh, happens for all strategy profiles S minus I for all the other players. But there is another condition, uh, there exists some strategy profile of the other players such that this inequality is strict. What that means is that uh, whenever you are uh, looking at these two uh, profiles, uh, two strategies SI and SI prime of this player I, uh, for every strategy profile whatever the other players are picking, uh, you will be at least better off th than the, uh, in playing SI than playing SI prime. But there should be one such case, one such strategy profile of the other player where you are getting strictly better off. If you are not having that, then we will not even call it a weakly dominated strategy. If it happens to be same for all these uh, players, then there is no reason to call it domination of any kind. So let us come back to this example and try to 
um, uh, uh, see wh- which kind of uh, uh, which of the strategy pairs are strictly and weakly dominated. Clearly, we can see that for all the uh, s minus i, so uh, when we are considering i to be equal to two, uh, the second player, then uh, minus i is nothing but player one. And for all possible strategies, so for all s minus i's, uh, which is uh, which can take the values of u and d, we can see that m, uh, the utility at m for player two is strictly better than r. So m strictly dominates r. Uh, so in some sense, r is strictly dominated. But if you look at player one uh, and look at the strategy d, so you can see that here. Uh, uh, utility of uh, of uh, player one uh, when it plays u is at least as much so let me just uh, erase a little bit to make it a little clear so if you look at uh, player uh, player one you can see that this utility is strictly greater than uh, this one this utility is also strictly greater but this equal uh, utility is uh, equal so you can uh, clearly say that it is, uh, I mean, those inequality for all strategies of the other players, uh, the utility is at least as much as the utility as D. Uh, utility at U is at least as uh, as much as the utility at D. But there are certain uh, S minus I's, uh, which can be either M or L, where this inequality is strict. So certainly D is uh, weakly dominated, while R is uh, strictly dominated. Now, uh, once we have discussed what is a dominated strategy, now it is the right time to discuss about dominant strategy. So, uh, just the uh, the, uh, the direction essentially changes. So, dominated strategy is when the strategy is being dominated by some other strategy. Dominant strategy is something which dominates all other strategies. And the definition essentially says the same thing. A strategy SI is strictly or weakly dominant strategy for a player I uh, if that SI strictly or weakly dominates all other SI primes, uh, not including that SI of course, uh, all other SI prime. Again, let us look at uh, examples and uh, uh, try to find out wh- what are the dominant strategy. So let us come back to this uh, very old example uh, of neighboring uh, kingdoms dilemma. Uh, uh, we remember that uh, there, was, uh, there was two strategies for each of these players. Uh, agriculture warfare which is equivalent to defense uh, and the numbers the utilities were as shown in this uh, in this figure in this uh, uh, matrix now let us try to understand wh- whether there exists some uh, strictly dominant strategy uh, for any of these players uh, so here we can see that uh, if player uh, player one picks defense it, you can see that uh, this uh, this strategy so the utility here is strictly more than the utility uh, when he picks agriculture and similarly if it uh, if the other player is also choosing defense then also it is a better strategist it's strictly uh, better than the uh, utility uh, when it uh, picks agriculture so you can say that uh, this strategy defense uh, for player one is essentially strictly dominating strictly dominant strategy because it uh, um, uh, dominates all other SI primes uh, just in this case the SI prime that set uh, SI minus SI is just a singleton so uh, there is only one other strategy which is agriculture and uh, SI dominates so defense dominates uh, strictly dominates agriculture and you can see that the same thing happens even for uh, player 2 uh, defense strictly dominates agriculture Okay, so let's now look at another example uh, and uh, presumably you can, you might have guessed by now that we are going to give an example of a weakly dominant strategy. So uh, the example is as follows, you have one indivisible item for sale, let's say we are trying to sell a painting uh, and there are two players who value this item uh, with these numbers V1 and V2 respectively. Uh, so you can imagine that if they get that uh, item, how much uh, satisfied or happy they become, that is represented by this number. And the the protocol is as follows: they can choose a number uh, uh, between between zero and m, m being a very large number, so much larger than v1 and v2. 
um, uh, and within this uh, range from 0 to m uh, each player can choose one number uh, this picking this number is essentially their strategy um, now uh, this play, player uh, the the uh, the game is as follows uh, the rules of the game is as follows the player who quotes the largest number essentially will win that object uh, this uh, indivisible item and uh, will break the tie in favor of player one and this is an arbitrary tie breaking but it pays uh, so quote unquote pays the losing player's chosen number so if your valuation is uh, let's say hundred dollars and you quote a value of let's say ninety dollars um, and suppose the um, uh, the the other person has also um, uh, bid something like eighty dollars then you win you are you will be given that object but you will be paying eighty dollars and therefore your net payoff uh, because you you value that object as hundred uh, but you are paying eighty so this difference of twenty dollars is essentially the utility of, of this player and of course the utility of the losing player who does not get the item he, uh, his valuation his utility is going to be zero he does not make any payment uh, neither uh, the the item is allocated to him so he uh, gets a value of zero now to uh, represent this using uh, the normal form game we have uh, two players here one and two and the strategy space is a continuous uh, interval between 0 and m now the utility structure is uh, is uh, a little involved uh, you have so for player 1 if player uh, 1 and 2 have picked this numbers s1 and s2 which are the numbers that has that that has the that are the strategies of these two players then uh, if s1 uh, happens to be larger than s2 uh, or equal to because we are breaking the tie in favor of player one then that player wins so player one actually wins in this con uh, in this case and it pays the second highest uh, uh, number which is s2 in this case so v1 minus s2 is going to be the utility uh, of uh, of this particular player and if it does not happen that is if s1 is strictly less than s2 then player one does not win and it, uh, its utility is going to be zero. Now the similarly opposite thing happens when S1 is less than S2 then player uh, player two wins and then the utility is going to be V2 minus S1 uh, and zero otherwise. Now I am going to argue uh, you can you can uh, perhaps pause at this moment and think about which kind of uh, strategy or which kind of dominant strategy it has. I am going to argue that the strategy where si is actually equal to vi this is going to be a uh, weakly dominant strategy so what does that weakly dominant strategy mean so let us go back to the definition uh, so it means that for all the other si primes uh, notice that it's a dominant strategy therefore all the other strategies all the other si primes should be weakly dominated by this particular strategy si which is equal to vi for all those strategies it is going to be at least as much as uh, the utility that it gets when it, it uh, replaces this si with vi but uh, for that pair of strategies si si and si prime there must exist some s minus i tilde such that this inequality is strict i think this is this is clear let us see why this is true so imagine uh, what can happen so uh, without loss of generality let us assume that uh, uh, we are just focusing on player one let's, let's say s1, s1 is equal, equal to v1 and we just claim that uh, this is going to be weakly dominating any other strategy so let's say uh, this you know, what could be a different strategy it can be either larger than that uh, larger than uh, v1 or it can be less than v1 and the argument that I give uh, when uh, for one side when it is larger so let us assume that uh, S1 is strictly larger than V1 the argument that you are going to use you can just use a very uh, complementary um, uh, argument to show that uh, when S1 is less than V uh, S1 prime is less than uh, V1 then also the same argument will hold now we are uh, we, we are done with uh, these two pairs so S1 and S1 prime and we'll have to show that for all S minus I uh, tildes so let's say 
for all minus s minus i's for all the choices of the other player which in this case is just player 2 uh, whatever uh, strategy that the other player is picking uh, the utility of player 1 under this s1 uh, given s minus 1 which is uh, which is s2 would be at least as much as utility of the same player when it is picking SI, SI prime and the other players are picking whatever they are picking. Why is that true? So let us assume that the other players, the, the second player is, uh, um, uh, so on, on a line you can uh, draw this, this particular thing. So S1 is here and uh, which is equal to V1 and S1 prime is somewhere here which is a little larger than that. So if the other player, this player 2, a bit something above, above S1 prime, then that uh, agent essentially wins uh, the object and uh, the utility of uh, both these cases, uh, utility here or utility here is going to be zero. So in that case, the e equality holds, right? Uh, in the other uh, extreme case where uh, the, the bid the, the S minus uh, uh, one, which is the uh, the uh, strategy report, a strategy chosen by the other player, S two, uh, is smaller than S one. Then also you win and you get the same utility because whether you uh, beat S one prime, your valuation is still going to be V one, and you are going to pay the same one. You are you are still becoming the winner. So your utility does not change. There also the uh, the inequality is satisfied with the equality. Now the interesting part happens when S minus 1, that is S2, sits somewhere in between. So let's say uh, S2 is here. So let's say S1 is nothing but S1 plus epsilon and S2 is somewhere in between, which is S1 plus epsilon by 2, let's say, right? And what happens in this case? If you are uh, S1, uh, if you had reported S1, then the good thing is that you would have lost this uh, uh, item. You would not have been given this item uh, and your utility would have been zero. But if you had uh, uh, reported S S1 prime, which is larger than that value of S2, you still win the object and you pay this S2, which is, uh, which is actually larger than your valuation. So uh, remember that S1 was nothing but V1. So therefore, your actual valuation when you win uh, at, a, at a higher uh, uh, reported SI, uh, your valuation is going to be V1 minus the payment that you are making, which is V1 plus epsilon by 2. So in some sense, you are getting a negative uh, utility here. So in that case, you can see that this inequality is going to be satisfied with strict, uh, uh, in a strict manner. Uh, here you will have minus epsilon by 2. But if you had reported your uh, uh, V1 in the same way, uh, if your uh, S1 was equal to V1, then you would have got zero. So you can uh, clearly see uh, that uh, in this situation, you have uh, uh, a, a case where you are, you are having a strictly uh, worse uh, outcome for some choice of S minus I. Uh, for all the uh, other S, uh, S uh, minus I's, you are going to be at least as as good as uh, the utility when you are reporting your uh, SI to be equal to VI. And you can use this argument even when you are reporting it, uh, uh, if your SI prime uh, was here, so which was smaller than S1, you can similarly use a very similar argument and uh, show that uh, that is also a weakly dominant strategy. So for no matter wherever your SI prime uh, lives, either it is larger than S1, uh, smaller than S1, which is equal to V1, uh, it is going to be weakly dominated by uh, S1, which is equal to V1. And similar arguments ho holds for player two as well. So therefore, you can uh, say that uh, this strategy, strategy of uh, uh, reporting your v, uh, VI uh, to be equal to your uh, SI is a weakly dominant strategy. All right, so now that we have, uh, we know what uh, a dominance is, we also know what a dominant strategy is. Uh, now we also uh, come to the, uh, the next uh, definition, which is dominant strategy equilibrium. 
So this is the first time we are using this term equilibrium. So let's uh, spend a little bit of time. Uh, so uh, uh, as uh, in any other kind of systems like physical systems, equilibrium is a point uh, from which you don't really want to deviate. So equilibrium is sort of a stable uh, situation. And uh, in this context also, we are going to define it in a very similar way. We are going to say that a strategy profile S1 star, S2 star up to Sn star is a strictly or weekly dominant strategy equilibrium and we'll use the, uh, the acronym SDAC or WDAC if SI star is a strictly or weekly dominant strategy for that player I. And this holds for all players, for all N. So uh, S1 star here is a weekly or strictly dominant strategy for player one. Similarly, S2 star is the uh, weekly or string, uh, strictly dominant strategy for player two and so on. So let us look at an example and try to find out what is the uh, strictly or weekly dominant strategy. It's uh, fairly easy to figure that out. Uh, so uh, here is the game matrix. Um, uh, maybe you can just pause again and uh, try to find it out yourself. Uh, before I give the answer. So the answer is that uh, if you look at this particular strategy of player one B You can see that the uh, it uh, weekly dominates a because you have this utility which is at least as much as a and there is also a, uh, Another strategy for the other player where the uh, inequality is strict. So therefore B weekly dominates a uh, Similarly, you can see that uh, for uh, B also uh, weekly dominates C uh, because you have a strict inequality here. Uh, so notice that when SI and SI prime, this pair changes your S minus I at S minus I tilde, where your strict inequality will hold, can also change. S minus I tilde is essentially dependent on this pair SI and SI prime. It might not be the same for all uh, SI SI primes, right? So here the, the strict inequality holds uh, when the other player is choosing D and here the uh, weak inequality holds when the other player is choosing E. So B weakly dominates A, uh, B also weakly dominates C. So therefore B is a weakly dominant strategy for player one. Similarly, you can argue that uh, E is a weakly dominant strategy. I leave, it, leave that uh, as an exercise for you. E weakly dominates um, uh, strategy D. And therefore, this uh, strategy profile B, E is a weakly dominant strategy equilibrium. You can change this number slightly to make it strictly dominant and you can see that this is a strictly dominant strategy equilibrium. Uh, but this uh, example is more to illustrate what it means to have a weakly dominant strategy equilibrium. Um, so uh, we can predict uh, because game theory is all about predicting the outcome. We can predict as if this uh, particular outcome, B, E, is the most probable outcome of this uh, of this game. Uh, 